Hi, I'm Eugene Buchanan, and welcome to today's Tales from a Mountain Town podcast, brought to you by the Steamboat Pilot and Today newspaper. Today's installment is entitled The Berm. Dear Chuck Newby, congratulations on moving to Steamboat Springs. Before you wantonly disregard societal norms and revel in Mount Werner's bounty, there is one small thing you should know about living in Steamboat. It's called The Berm. They can make a horror flick about it with a catchy title like The Berm That Ate Steamboat. The Berm Makes the Blob Whine Like a Little Girl. Sure, your pulse rate will rise and you'll make plans to blow off work the next morning when you see snowflakes blanketing your deck at night. You'll preload the car and coffee maker, line up your ski clothes in a nice little row, pack a PBJ, and head to bed early. You won't even smack the snooze alarm at 7 a.m. You'll get up instantly. Grogginess be damned. You'll forego a shower, wolf down some oatmeal squares, and switch from your skivvies into your ski wear for your first powder day on the slopes. Then you'll fire up your Subaru, scrape its windshield with a CD case, and back down the driveway en route to a day of unbridled bliss. But that's when you'll see it. You'll notice it looming in your peripheral vision at first, but it won't really register. Something odd and amiss at the driveway's bottom. Only when you're almost upon it will it come into full stomach-knotting view. All that snow piled atop Steamboat is also piled in the streets, and the plows don't care about your powder habit. The result, a great wall of China blocking your access to the goods. You're so close and yet so far from your anticipated face shots on the mountain. You might as well have the Broncos' offensive line crouching between you and Gate D. Since it's churned up by Steamboat's finest, forget all about your little five horsepower snowplower. The only way through is elbow grease, one vertebrae piercing shovel load at a time. You'll try to apply proper weightlifting protocol and bend your legs with each heave of the shovel, but soon you'll revert to using nothing but back to clear a path to the world on the other side of the wall. You'll likely do a commendable job your first time. It might make you miss your gondola meeting, but your perfectly sculpted cleft will extend from bank to bank, a Moses-like parting of the Red Sea. Despite the fact that it made you miss first tracks, you'll step back with pride and marvel at your creation. You'll pat yourself on your aching back that a little manpower is all it took to thwart the combination of man's technology and nature's bounty blocking your way. Satisfied with the job well done, then you'll head out to the slopes with the only real repercussion, aside from your back feeling like it's already banged down wide out, being that you have to cross tracks on your first run. And all will be fine until you get home that night and see that it's still snowing. At first your mind won't really notice what this means. Today's ski day will erase all memories of the morning's ordeal, but then you'll wake up the next morning and it will be there again smiling at you all over. Like a recurring nightmare, it's the return of the berm, and it's waiting to wreak havoc on any vertebrae left standing. That's when you'll mutter your first curse words at the beast. And that's when you'll truly know what it's like to be a local here in Steamboat Springs, especially after it happens over and over again, as if the plow drivers have a personal vendetta against you. Our advice? Use your profanity sparingly. You'll need every berm blasphemy in the book to get you through the rest of the season. Thanks for listening to today's podcast, Tales from a Mountain Town, musings from 25 years of living in the Colorado Rockies, brought to you by the Steamboat Pilot and Today.